Hey, Alex here again, talking about Chapter 2 of Financial Accounting, 201. So, we're on analyzing transactions. This is very important. So, we'll start off with the introduction. I love these introduction sections. Okay. Um, every day it seems like we get an incredible amount of incoming email messages. You get them from friends, relatives, subscribed email lists and even spammers. But how do you organize all these messages? You might create folders to sort messages by sender, topic, or project. Perhaps you use keyword search utilities. You might even use filters, rules to automatically delete spam or send messages from your best friend to a specific to a special folder. In any case, you are organizing information so that it is simple to retrieve and allows you to understand, respond, or refer to messages. In the same way that you organize your email, companies develop an organize, organized method for processing, recording, and summarizing financial transactions. For example, Ample Incorporated has a huge volume of financial transactions. Millions, maybe billions, I don't know, most likely millions, resulting from sales of innovative computers, digital media, iTunes, iPods, iPhones, and iPads. When Apple sells an iPad, a customer has the option of paying with credit card, debit card, check card, Apple gift card, financing arrangement, or cash. In order to analyze only the information related to Apple's cash transactions, so just cash, the company must record or summarize all these similar sales using a single category or cash account. Similarly, Apple will record credit card payments for iPads and sales from financing, financing arrangements in different accounts. While Chapter 1 uses the accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, to analyze and record financial transactions, this chapter presents more practical and efficient recording methods that most companies use. In addition, this chapter discusses possible accounting errors that may occur along with method, methods to detect and correct them. Very important, detection and correction. I do say so. So basically, using accounts to record transactions. So accounting systems are designed to show the increases and decreases in each accounting equation, an element, as a separate record. This record is called an account. So everything's going to be an account. To illustrate, the cash column of Exhibit 1 records the increases and decreases in cash. So an account in its simplest form has three parts. A title, which is the name of the accounting equation element recorded in the account. Number two, a space for recording increases in the amount of the element. And three, a space for recording decreases in the amount of the element. So you're going to have a spot for an increase and a decrease. The account form presented below is a T count. So a T count looks like something like this. Oh, I don't have any markers. Next time I'll have markers. But a T account is basically a line horizontal and a line vertical. It has the title of the account, let's say cash, and it has the left side, which is the debit, and the right side, which is the credit. Um, you can see right here, right at the bottom, little T, little T account. Uh, so, Every account has that. So that's why sometimes you might want to do a T account if you're doing a problem and just summarize every transaction that affected that account, all the accounts that you're working with. That way you can better see what you have. Don't try to keep it all in your head. It's not a good practice to get into because the human brain is not meant to do all that memory keeping at once. It's a reflex organism. Just have your work tools and use those. So, increases in assets <coughs> are recorded on the debit side of an account. Likewise, decreases in assets are recorded on the credit. So when you buy, so when you when you get cash, you're going to debit it. When you spend cash, you're going to credit it. The excess of the debits over the credits is the balance of the account. So the so um. Let's say we have 32,500 
dollars in debits. We have credits of 26600 So our balance of the cash for November 30th, 2011, for this net solutions, would be 5900 So you always, so whatever you de whenever you decrease cash, you'll keep track of it on the, le on the, on the right side credit. Whenever you increase cash, you'll keep it on the left side debit. <clears throat> and, then at the and then at the end, you'll add them up, subtract debit from credit, and that'll be your balance. Okay, chart of accounts. A group of accounts for a business entity is called a ledger. And I'm going to do these videos. I'm going to do a lecture video, and then I might do a um, example video where I could just show some problems. Because I have this board now. This is the SPSCC library. It's pretty neat. They have these study rooms. Um, so a group of accounts for a business entity is called a ledger. A list of accounts in the ledger is called a chart of accounts. Assets are resources owned by the business entity. These resources can be physical, like cash supplies, or intangibles, like patents, copyrights, trademarks. Also very valuable. Um, another thing about intangibles, we'll get more into that when we get into intermediate. Um, education is intangible. So if you're on the verge of saying, oh, should I go to school? Should I not? Go to school because it, it doesn't matter what the price is. You can always get financing. But think of it this way. It's an investment in your mind. So it's an intangible asset. You're getting something. You're, yeah, you're paying. But you're getting edu knowledge in, in place of it. And that's valuable. That's always valuable. It's an intangible asset. Okay, liabilities are debts owed to outsiders, creditors. Liabilities are often identified on the balance sheet by titles that include payable. Examples of liabilities include accounts payable, notes payable, wages payable. So cash received before services are delivered creates a liability to perform the service. And supplies or assets delivered you know, are create liabilities. Unearned revenue. Unearned revenue when you if um if if I'm a magazine subscription company and someone bought a year supply of subscription, I can't recognize the revenue until I give them the issues. So every month when I give them an issue, I'll recognize that month of money that I was given in a lump sum for the year, but I'll recognize the month right there. Organization. You can only recognize revenue when you can't. You get in trouble if you won't, if you don't. Owner's equity is the owner's right to the assets of the business after liabilities have been paid. So for a proprietorship, the owner's equity is represented by the balance of owner's capital account. A drawing account represents the withdrawals. So the capital account will be a credit, but the drawing account will be a debit. Revenues are increases in owner's equity as a result of selling services or products to customers. Examples of revenue include fees earned, fares earned, commissions revenue, and rent revenue. Expenses result from using up assets or consuming services in the process of generating revenues. Examples of expenses include wages expense, rent expense, utilities expense, supplies expense, and miscellaneous expense. Okay, all businesses use what is called the double entry accounting system. So now we're on the double entry system. Every business transaction is to be recorded in at least two accounts. This is what you have to get used to from here on out. Start thinking double. Every transaction affects two accounts. The total debits recorded for cash transaction to be equal to the total credits recorded. So debits have to equal credits. That's why we have this system. So if there's an error, we'll be able to find it. And you'll know where the money's going and where it's coming from. Um, so here's the balance sheet accounts. Assets always get increased by debits. This is the rule of thumb. Credits decrease assets always. So credits decrease assets, debits increase assets. Credits decrease, debits increase. Now for liabilities, it's the exact opposite. Debits decrease liabilities, credits increase liabilities. See how it's kind of, it's the opposite now. So remember that. Debits decrease liabilities. Credits increase liabilities. Owner's equity. Debit, debits decrease owner's equity. Credits increase owner's equity. So when you're closing out the revenue, if you had a, if you had a gain, 
you're going to increase your, your owner's equity with a credit. If you had a net loss where expenses were higher, you're going to debit your owner's equity. Okay, income statement accounts. Um, revenues always increase with credits and always decrease with debits. And the exact opposite is true with expense accounts. Debits increase expense accounts. Credits decrease expense accounts. Remember that you're gonna have to get. You need to make your mind flexible. Be able to go back and forth. This is not like. This is accounting is teaches you to be flexible and neutral to where you'll be able to work forward or backwards. So you have to be able to work forward and backwards. Be fluent. You'll get it with time. Okay. Withdrawals always increase with debits, always decrease with credits. The normal balance of an account is what it, it naturally is, so cash should always naturally have a debit balance. Um, if it doesn't, it means you overdrew maybe your bank account. If yeah, if if your cash is a, is a credit, it means you owe. Yeah, you spent more cash than you had, or is an error. You owe. You double put a transaction. Um. So, uh, for example, a credit balance in the office equipment account could result only from an error. Office equipment, office equipment should always be a debit. If it's a credit, you accidentally did something on a, on a transaction. Because you can't have a decrease, you can't have more decreases in an office equipment than, than increases. On the other hand, though, a debit balance in accounts payable could result from an overpayment. So if you overpaid a vendor, you overpaid um, a debt, that could happen. You could have a debit balance because you maybe you paid twice on something you only needed to pay once on. So then they should they have you have to go to the trouble of calling them up and saying, "Hey, I accidentally overpaid you," and they'll check their account. They're like, oh, yep, you double paid here for the month of May. Sorry about that. We're gonna have to go through the process. It'll be a, you might might take you a month to get that payment back. That's why it's always good not to double to overpay. Always underpay. You can always overpay later. So get in the habit of underpaying first and then overpaying later. Money cash is power. So don't let it out. Don't let it out easily. That's the rule with accounting. Because no one wants to give back money. Trust me. I worked for payable I worked for uh Great Wolf Lodge payables for a little bit and the you know, vendors are stubborn. Oh no, please. We'll just put it towards your next month's statement. No, give me that back. So yes. Um so journalizing uh Okay, the, the rules of journalizing are the date of transaction is you always want to put a date. Always put a date. Always put the title of the account to be debited in the left-hand column. And the title of the account to be credited in the right. So debits go on the left, credits go on the right. And then each account that you're uh, messing with. A brief description, so always do a memo. And then a post-reference. Depending on if you're doing a manual or computerized, you're going to have a reference to reference what page is going to. The process of recording a transaction is called journalizing. So always journalizing is what you want to be good at in accounting. You want to get comfortable. You want to know what's being debited, what's being credited. These are all journal entries. I'll go back. I'll do a video just on journal entries and I'll just do them on this board and I'll just show you oh hey all right I'm big um, okay the trial balance errors may occur in posting debits and credits from the journal to the ledger one way to detect such errors is by preparing a trial balance double entry accounting requires that debits must always equal credits the trial balance verifies this equality the steps in preparing a trial balance are as follows. So um, you're going to have all your debits, all your credits, every account you used from your assets, liabilities, equity, revenues, expenses, and you're going to have all the natural debits over here, all the natural credits over here. You can add them up at the bottom. They need the balance. If not, go back through, check your transactions. Okay, here's some common errors. If the, difference, if the difference between the debit and credit columns is 10, 100, or 1,000, an error in addition may have occurred. So re-add re your, your trial balance. It could have just been a normal computation error. 
if the difference is divisible by 2, so let's say the difference is 404 between the debit and the credit, the, the, the error may be due to a credit account balance of 202 that was entered as a debit. So you may have entered a credit as a debit, which will make it off by 404. So just go check your credits, make sure you might find it, and then you'll be able to switch it to the debit, which will fix everything. If the difference between the debit and credits is evenly divisible by 9, it's going to either be a transposition or a slide. A transposition means writing 542 as 452. And a slide is writing 442 or 542 as $54.20. You see how you slide the decimal? Um, if it's not evenly divisible by 2 or 9, review the ledger to see if an account balance in the amount of the error has been omitted from the trial balance. So make sure you have all your amounts on the trial balance. So, yeah, check everything. If you can't find with any of those, check the last entry of the journal and just work from the last to the beginning of the entries of the journal to find it. <coughs> if the error has already been journalized and posted to the ledger, you got to do a correcting journal entry. So, if you debited supplies for 12500 and you credited accounts payable for 12500 but it should have been, but you should have debited office equipment. It wasn't supplies, it was office equipment. So you have to go in, credit supplies, debit office equipment. So that's what it should have been. So you can always correct by flipping the wrong entry for the right one and just say to correct erroneous debit to supplies on May 5th. Always do a memo, always say why you're doing that entry. So fix this, because if you go back, you'll know why the heck you were doing it. I'm, you know, I'm not a genius. I can't remember every transaction I do. But if I write down a memo of what it was I was doing, when I go look at it, I'll be, oh, okay, that makes sense. Reference. References are big in accounting. You want to reference it. Especially if an auditor is on your trail. <laughs> keep it clean. Keep your books lean. Keep them clean. In horizontal analysis, this is a unique one. The amount of each item on the current financial statement is compared with the same item on an earlier statement, the increase or decrease in the amount of the item is computed together with the percent or increase or decrease. It's pretty neat. Um, I wonder if I can decrease the light. Here. Oh, so that's, that controls the heater. Fine, fine with heat in here. All right, so let's say um, our fees earned for 2012 was 187500 and our fees earned for 2011 was only 150000 So the increase or decrease would be the amount of the increase would be 37,500 and the percent of increase would be 25 percent so you can compare last year's income statement with this year's find the increase or decrease in every account every expense and see what the percent was that way you know oh, okay our wages expense increased by 33 percent what the heck's going on there we better check that out you know get some get some people on that one even for personal finance, 